David Atkins in Canada kindly sent me this uh, Canadian Crying Hornby catalogue. I remember it was very kind of him. You should have a look at it. his channel. It has uh, some wonderful uh, videos of uh, very long Canadian trains that are in operation there. Absolutely stunning scale. But uh, let's just jump into this catalogue and have a, have a quick look at the interesting mix of Canadian style models and, and British style models. We'll just uh, flip through here. You can see some uh, lovely, uh, lovely sets here. Let's just pop this down. Now, some of these models were destined for the Canadian market, and um, some of them showed up here in the UK too. So I think a lot of them are going to be very familiar. And there's the, uh, the single-ended diesel, which we've got on the layout today. Now, interestingly, a lot of the items in this catalogue don't have R numbers, or they have numbers, but no R prefix. So uh, this CP rail unit here is uh, 0553. So we'll just pop this down. Everything's in, in French as well. So a lovely group of models there, but you've got the, the Flying Scotsman and, and the Princess there in, the, in that nice crimson, crimson color LMS livery. We've got these lovely CP rail coaches and then a, a British rail corporate blue Royal Mail coach up there. So quite, quite an interesting mix. We've got the, the Coronation here. And there we have the wagons, which we've got on, on the railway today as well. I think they're all on this page or pages. We've got um, the CP Rail newsprint car. And I think sometimes it's referred to as the paper car. And uh, that's uh, catalogue number. Let's see if we can read that. Uh, 1353. And we've got the uh, refrigerator car, also CP Rail. And that's got a, a number of 12. 93. I think all of the models I've got on the layout today were available between 1970 and 73. And then we've got, which one other one have we got here? We've got the car transporter. Let's see if we can lift that up a little closer. So there's two car transporters on this page. I've just pointed at the wrong one. So I think I've got the, the CP Rail one with these name boards on the side. And that was uh, model number 3423 rail auto transporter with six scale cars so uh, quite interesting stuff and then we've got the uh, the cp rail bright yellow caboose i love that model it really is a terrific color that's uh, model number 1153 so we'll just pop that down i think we've got all the models i got on the, the layout there today so we'll just have a, a swift look through some of the other pages so I think the model, the, the catalogue was probably produced in the UK. So again, a nice, uh, nice set of models here. This, this one definitely showed up here in the UK as well, didn't it? Along with these, some of these freight liners we, we got here too. Of course, the, uh, the car tick as well. Had that in a video some time ago. System 6 track being introduced here as well. And then we've got uh, System 6 and Super 4 side by side. Lovely cleaning brush there, that's a lovely item. I do have one of those tucked away somewhere. We've got these very familiar items, suspension bridge and girder bridges. And these are sort of British style stations marketed in, in Canada too. Interesting concept. And there we have the back, the back cover there, wind up train sets. And again, we've got uh, this legend here, manufactured in England by Rovex Triang for Meccano Triang. And an address here in Toronto, in Canada. So I think if we just pop that down and uh, we'll have a, a quick look over the models. So very familiar model. This one being painted up in this sort of ready orange color. It's uh, almost identical, I think, to the, uh, the single-ended diesel we've seen earlier, the, the silver one. Long-running model, um, although longer running in, in Canada than here in, in the UK. So if you want to see the inside workings of this, I'll leave a, a link to an earlier video which uh, with a very similar model in it. But uh, it is uh, the one notable thing about this, I think, is that uh, it has smooth wheels and instead of... Um, the ribbed wheels which, which these models very often have so it makes it very very smooth running on the rails 
it sounds odd to me when you see it in motion that it, it doesn't have the uh, have the uh, the ribbed wheels and the sound. It, it almost sounds like the, there is something wrong. And here is the uh, the paper car. This was uh, one three five three in this in this dark green. I think they've just used the uh, the refrigerator car molding, which is a, a very early early model. I think goes back. Um, back into the 50s, I think it was uh, model R129. I think they've just repurposed it a bit here. And we've got these lovely uh, pinpoint axles rather than open axle boxes. Nice metal ladders. Quite crude printing when you look up, look up close. I suppose you, you can just make out what's printed there. It is a little soft, so we'll pop that down. And we'll have a look at uh, this uh, CP rail car transporter. Now this is the one that uh, Bob Input kindly sent to me earlier in the year and it was an incomplete model, had parts missing. I didn't think I would ever manage to get the parts to uh, put it back together again. But again, this is um, some very crude 3D printing. Um, if you look at the insert pictures there, you can see how, how the model arrived when Bob sent it to me. And uh, you can you can see the, the very crude parts I've made and, and stuck together. So it's by no means perfect, but I think visually it stands up quite nicely. And I've just decided to add these sort of very lurid coloured cars because it goes with the other colours with the models today. But again, thanks to Bob, it's a really, really kind of him to send me this model. So we'll just pop that down there to one side. And then we have the, uh, the silver refrigerator car here. I think this was model one two nine three and again you can see that's just been sprayed up in um, in silver paint um, the roof is glued onto onto these models so they are quite light which is one of the other things that would be nice to add a little extra weight to them um, they can be a little bit bouncy so again metal ladders and the, the paint the paint is sort of wearing through a little you can see that that's probably black plastic under there on, on the roof so again, quite striking in the silver let's see if we can see what's what's printed there and again like the green one it has got a separately fitted black black under frame there we'll, we'll pop that down and we'll get the uh, the caboose this wonderful colored caboose I, I think this is really a terrific item it just sticks out so much on the railway, doesn't it? That bold lettering along the side there. Lovely printing. I'm not sure how accurate to uh, real life things these are, but they're, they're certainly lovely things on the railway. Nice black chimney there. Really pretty thing. This is, this is the one, the only one of the items which uh, which is boxed. So that was. Uh, one, one, sorry, 1153. I think some of these models may have had um, other catalogue numbers, three digit numbers, um, sort of British numbers, but I'm always unsure as to which is the correct number or not. So there we go, 1153 CP Rail Caboose, and again printed in, in French there. No, this is a, a Hornby Railways box. So this is probably later. This, this cellophane has definitely seen better days. But, uh, Say so it's the the only only one of the models that I do have that is, is uh, in in boxed condition. So I've got the models back on the track, but facing the opposite direction. Let's give them a little bit of power and see how we do with this. Across the uh, the bright Gerda Bridge, there almost the same colour as the locomotive. The loco a bit more orange, I think. Definitely picking up a bit of pace there, so we'll just back off the power. We don't want to fly off those points at the bottom there. There we go, behind the station. And just watch her as she comes across this diamond crossing. That slight stutter there. There's a point where the, the pickup wheels are on nothing but plastic. And there we go, coming up to the incline now. Let's 
see if we can uh, change hands on the camera here. Just need a little bit more power in there, I think, just to compensate. And then up, up we go, we're on to level ground again. About there, I think we'll stop that, just about there. So I was just uh, losing track of that. Again, trying not to turn the camera around too quickly while we're following it. It, um, it, it can be quite tricky. So there she is, right up on the top again. Just the, the nose on the bridge there. We'll just inch her forwards a little, and then we'll be able to have a, a quick look at some of the things that have gone on, on the layout this week. There we go, we'll just keep her there. And as I said last week, I think uh, it was time to get the bridge in, and we had a good look at the bridge last week. I think the track had stopped there. So I've got uh, everything screwed down there now, but no side walls on that side of the bridge. So uh, the bridge is in, nice and secure, and then we've got these at a sort of skew angle. So uh, that's gonna be quite nice there. We've got a track here, which is gonna go all the way around there. If we, if we have a look from above, can we see that? It runs in underneath the elevated section. And we're gonna use that for a bit of fun and games with the uh, the ore unloading kit or the, the gravity unloading bridge um, set from the, uh, the 70s or early 80s, that one. I think uh, late 70s in this style box. I think uh, 78 through to 82, this, this uh, particular set was made. I think we've got a, a number on the side of it here somewhere. That's uh, our 415 operating ore wagon set, but uh, we'll have a, a closer look at that Next time I think I'll have that uh, all set up. Didn't manage to get that uh, sorted by this week. Um, again, excuse the floorboards. I've got a point in here. Uh, I've got it uh, wired up to, uh, to run with a point motor. I've got the, the, the appropriate cabling in here, but not connected to anything. It's all tested. It runs really, really nicely. And I've got the side walls in obviously here. So we've started from the bridge and we're going to work down to level ground again and a bit of trickery in here really. I've got some more uh, 3D parts printed just to, to try and help this out. It seems to have worked quite nicely and this is all a bit of a, a fiddle in this area but it sort of looks the part really. So I'm hoping again, excuse the floorboards, again I'm hoping to have this uh, all sorted and connected up to the, the main line from underneath and we'll, we'll have a bit more elevated track out here where the box is and you see that we haven't quite got as far as we could with the uh, the side walls but it uh, it all sort of takes time so uh, the rest of that elevated section drops down here we've got all the piers in everything's ni nice and secure um, so I'm, I'm hoping not to have too much problems with that so all fresh um, fish plates in here. I don't know whether we can uh, see into there. I've been through quite a, a few packets of these, so all, all of the elevated track has got uh, fresh. M most of the uh, level track has got fresh as well. Um, so that's all working quite nicely. So it runs all the way around there. More gaps you can see in my, my dodgy, very second hand track. It's all steel. Uh, the odd bit of um, Pico Flexi in here so far. Another dodgy bit of track there, and this comes around as we've seen the, the train running through there. And I've got that spur running off there, so I'm hoping to run out to the coal unloading bridge or ore unloading bridge around here. My plan was to put a turntable in there, but uh, we'll see how that goes. But I think that's probably it for this week. But, uh, we'll try and keep it a bit, a bit shorter than the last one. So I think we'll just give that a little bit of power and uh, thanks again for watching. It's uh, hugely appreciated. And if you look back next time, we'll hopefully have that uh, unloading bridge sorted. Goodbye now. <laughs>